Actually, the module concept came from trying to train so many people to do this, the way I wanted it to be structurally sound and something that would take going down the highway without coming apart. Most of modern construction is on the basis of if nothing jiggles and nothing shakes, the sheetrock on the inside will hold the stud one stable and the hardy plank on the outside will hold the stud stable and everything will be good. But we're going to take this house down the road at 60 miles an hour. So we add extra elements that create a module that allow us, because of the main times we had to cut these things out and change them, move them and stuff, allow us to just pull two screws off the bottom and two screws off the top and move the frame element that holds a window or holds a door and move that upwards or downwards in the wall to be able to accommodate wiring or a floor plan or something that we didn't think about or feel until we walked through the space. I like to build organically. And a lot of times if you just build something, say, okay, that's it. We're done. We're not going to do anything else to change it. It's like, oh, it just nags at you the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, and there's definitely things sometimes like you can get a door that just feels a little too close to the edge or a little bit too close to the center or whatever, and it just just doesn't feel quite right. You get it up and you, you know right away it just doesn't, it's not, it's not sitting with you right. So that's, that's really big. The other thing we've done is we put the, push the header, which is the structural unit of the module, push that all the way up to the top so for maximum flexibility so that even if uh, we have to move the sill height or something, that's possible. We don't have to destroy the whole thing. We can cut the cripples out. And the cripples are the intermediates. This is, we want to talk about the anatomy of the modules. And so the basic anatomy is from the outside, you've got the studs, which are the, the uh, two by fours that run all the way from the base plate, the, the bottom plate, all the way up to the top plate. It, actually, in our case, they're not true studs because we rarely work with an eight foot ceiling. Mm -hmm. We tend to work with nine foot mm -hmm. ceilings and by definition, a stud is going to be uh, accommodates for an eight foot ceiling. It's pre cut to have a top plate and another top plate above it and a bottom plate and end up being eight foot on the interior. So we tend to be at nine foot. We get much better value out of our interior space. And on these exceptional houses, like we're doing here, we're actually at 10 foot, I think, and 12 foot, yeah, 12 foot. on our, our walls. And then the other walls are even higher because they go all the way up to the peak. Mm -hmm. So we do break away in our framing technique from a lot of normal methodologies. And part of that's on the basis of when he says stud, we might have a two by 12 that goes 14 feet up to the peak from the floor. And that's so that we get all the bracing we need to be able to twist and stuff and then block it. In other, cases, other times we actually put a, a wall that ends at maybe 10, 11, or 12 feet and then join the very top part. The way we build determines how we frame as far as the type of structure we're doing, the type of roof we're doing. And is this case pro proof with building these two houses, Mackie went with one style of building it and I went with another style. And these are to demonstrate some of the many, many, many variables on what's right. Yeah, so uh, I mean the, yeah, so the anatomy is the, the studs go from floor to ceiling. Then we've got um, a, like a, I don't even know what you'd call that, but it's like a, the, the closer, the bottom closer, which creates the box. Then we've got the cripples on the inside, which actually space out the uh, structural sill and the structural head of the window. And the, the cripples are short, so they don't run the full height, but they run up to support the bottom of the window sill, the structural sill, not the actual window sill, the finished window sill, but the structural window sill and the structural window head. And then, um, and then, as I said, the header at the top closed it out. And that was what we were saying about the maximum flexibility. You could even come in and by rejigging the cripples, you could uh, move a window up or down. Um, the, the other thing, and this is, we're talking about the building styles, the other thing, this is something we've talked about for a long time and we experimented this time with it. Um, it by building in modules, it allows you to have a much more collaborative build process because you can, you, it's like breaking your building up into bite-sized chunks. And then I could just basically, I did drawings of the modules and my team just went at it and I could kind of just supervise and just make sure that they were all doing the right thing, got, got had the right idea. And uh, you know, pretty quickly we materialized um, four really good 
uh, window modules. They were incredibly square, incredibly flat. I was really pleased with the quality that came out of that. Um, and uh, it, that's, you know, that's something because in conventional framing, it's designed for a crew, a team, usually two guys, maybe three guys, and they, they'll frame up a whole wall and you've got a kind of a head guy and then he's got a cut man or maybe there's a cut man or a runner or something like that. Um, and so that, that works to more towards uh, somebody who's got very specialized s skills and experience. This is a way to uh, allow people who don't maybe have the best skills in the world to all collaborate on a building and come together uh, with these parts. The other thing that I like about that is potentially someone like Zach I know has a few uh, windows that he's salvaged. He could be building these modules in his garage and saving these up, just tilting them against the wall and then when he comes, when he's finally comes time to build his tiny house, he's got it sort of almost prefabbed. And this is something we've been talking about for a while. The potentials are, are big. We could actually be, be shipping these, putting these in shipping containers and have like a prefab house that arrives at somebody's house. Um, all that's very cool possibilities with the module.